There are a wide variety of electrical equipment and electrical related tasks that workers may be exposed to as they perform their job duties each day. Protecting electrical workers from the hazards of electricity is the purpose of your organization's electrical safety program and its safe work practices and procedures. One of the leading authorities on electrical safety is the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA. Their standard for electrical safety in the workplace, 70E, is recognized by many regulatory authorities as the best practices for electrical safety and has been incorporated by reference into many safety and health regulations. The 2021 NFPA 70E focuses on protecting workers from the two main hazards of electricity, the shock hazard and the arc flash hazard. A shock hazard is defined as a source of possible injury or damage to health associated with current through the body caused by contact or approach to exposed energized electrical conductors or circuit parts. There are several factors that contribute to the amount of damage caused by an electric shock, including the amount of electric current, the frequency of the power source, the current's path through the body, and the time duration of the shock event. The other main hazard associated with electricity is an arc flash. An arc flash hazard is defined as a source of possible injury or damage to health associated with the release of energy caused by an electric arc. There are several factors that contribute to the amount of damage that may be caused by an arc flash, including the amount of fault current, the duration of the arc event, the distance of a worker from an electric arc source, and the protective equipment worn by the worker. One important safety principle contained in the NFPA 70E is that an electrical worker must be qualified for the work to be performed. A qualified person is defined as follows. A qualified person is one who has demonstrated skills and knowledge related to the construction and operation of the electrical equipment and installations and has received safety training to identify the hazards and reduce the associated risks. A qualified person must be trained and knowledgeable in the construction and